on in, hop on in. What are we here? Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief. Trusted. Tested. True. You see that, everybody? That is the first frost of the year. Leather work gloves are officially coming out of retirement for the year. It's that time, folks. Out at the cornfield this morning. It is a chilly one. Last night it got just to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. High for today, I think is about 62 degrees. Today is October 7th, 2023. It's kind of cold outside. Yesterday we only used one tractor and grain cart. And so to avoid all of the hours being put on Grant and I's tractor, we're going to use the secondary tractor today. And this grain cart just stayed tarped all day yesterday. So we're going to untarp it. And then is there corn in the combine, Grant? Uh, a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, empty out the combine, get started with everything all fresh and clean. Almost tripped, it's kind of hazardous walking out here. There's not only corn stalks kind of bent over like this, they're perfect for catching your foot, but there's lots of organic material and it's kind of squishy underneath. Combine is fueled up, full of diesel exhaust fluid. The oil is checked, hydraulic fluid is checked. Gage just blew out the air filter. I think we need to start a petition. Who wants to see Gage run the combine? I think you'd do a really good job. Thank you to the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. Working on a farm every day not only comes with a lot of manual labor, but also a large mental load. There are a million little things on the farm that cause stress in daily working operations, from finding a healthy work-life balance, to maintaining mental clarity in decision-making, to working closely with family. If you struggle with mental health, you are absolutely not alone. It can be confusing to know where to start when looking to improve your mental well-being, and that's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is customizable online therapy that offers phone, video, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's network of over 30,000 mental health professionals that might not otherwise be accessible in your area. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy both more affordable and more accessible. You can start today by visiting my link, betterhelp.com Laura Farms, to get 10% off your first month today. 
Simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your specific needs and get matched with a therapist in just a few days. After that, you can begin scheduling your sessions. If at any time you find that your therapist isn't right for you, you can request a different one at no additional charge. If you think BetterHelp might be a good fit for you, visit betterhelp.com slash laurafarms to get 10% off your first month today. Clicking that link in the description box below not only helps support my channel, but can be your first step in improving your mental well-being. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. That looks pretty full, Grant. Yeah, that's a full one. Um, wait, can you, what, <laughs> Gage, so what's, our, the, what's the sign? Our radios are dead again today, and so, uh, full. <laughs> oh, there we go, Gage is doing it back. We're full. <laughs> Holy Check cow. Shake a little bit on his hood. No, you better not, you better not. We just, We've got enough downed corn here. I think we're leaving enough corn on the ground behind us. We don't need any extra. None of the corn that's on the ground will go to waste. Uh, people bring cows in from out of state and will fence off the whole quarter and the cows will eat all the feed there. And so like we rent out the ground because there's feed on it. So they pay us to put the cows on. It actually works out pretty well for all involved. It's just really sad because you I guys- I would rather put it in my truck. I would much truck. rather take it to the co-op and be able to use it to fill the contracts. But you guys, Part of why it's so frustrating is that we went to so much work. You guys saw the literal blood, sweat, and tears that went into irrigation this summer. And so it's just really sad to feel like, not that that work went to waste, but like you just went to all that effort and then to see it laying down. One day before we harvested it, look at that. That's just sad. I feel incredibly grateful to be in a really nice piece of equipment with a very functional corn head and it is really doing the best that it possibly could without putting the reel on the head. So that is just, that's just kind of a pain. That's a last ditch effort and all things considered, it's working pretty well. It's just kind of disheartening to look at. Grant, on a good day, how many acres have we been able to knock out? Have we had like a really big day of harvest yet? We had a couple of really good days of beans, and yesterday was pretty slow on corn. Well, the problem is like we can harvest out here, but it's the trucks. So we're harvesting along the highway, and you can't like you could unload like keep the truck on the road and then just unload onto it. But there's so many other trucks like you can't block the road. And then if you bring the truck into the field since it got so much rain trucks are not meant to go off-road and so they just sink like a combine can drive around tractor can drive around but a semi-truck cannot and it's no fun pulling semi-trucks out it's uh pretty muddy conditions out here actually i know you can't really tell because the ground is kind of covered in the mulch that the combine spits out the back but it's I almost, soggy i almost got stuck earlier gage filmed it you almost got stuck yeah uh, uh so like when i when i was doing the end rows and I first came down, the uh, uh, the grain tank was full. And I've never used this, but this combine has a differential lock. And I was spinning this side, and I had to lock the tires together so I could get out. But, I'm uh, glad you didn't get stuck. Yeah, it was a tough. Remember what I was just saying about us spending all that time irrigating and how many circles these pivots made? These tracks are so deep. So even though Grant wasn't all the way full, I mean, he's pretty close to being full. Just the combine oh. bouncing over these rows sends kernels flying over that big top. Fill the front, yeah. We really need radios, Grant. Every last kernel. Give him the signal. You ready? Yep. He repeated the signal back. We're good. <laughs> Smoke we signals accepted. Full. So Laura told me that you guys wanted to see more of me. So we're just picking today. We're picking corn. And I'm following the combine right now. We started a new pass. And I the way I run it is so if we start a new pass like this. I will follow the combine, and sometimes it's not necessary, but if the hopper does get full and you're on the other side, you're gonna have to drive 
all the way back around to get to her. But if I'm behind her, she'll just cut a little path right next to it so I can come up and she can unload and finish going. That's how we've done it since I've been here. So I think she'll make it. Uh, you probably can't tell, but I mean, it's starting to peak a little bit. She'll be able to make it though. We ain't got much farther left. But I probably loaded, to, honestly, I don't know, maybe about 15 trucks, maybe more. We're just running one grain cart today. I mean, I'm keeping up. So, Grant and Laura, we're in the combine together. Grant jumped out, so now it's just Laura. So, me and Laura just trucking along, hoping to finish this field today. We're almost done. Maybe a little over halfway. So, hopefully we get some night picking in. I love picking I love working in the dark, especially in tractors or equipment. Just turning the lights on, on anything. It, I think it's so cool. Like, having the combine next to me and my lights are on and their lights are on it's just it looks really cool it makes really good pictures too but yeah she told me you want to see more of me so here i am i'm just just starting to get into the filming stuff so i'm sorry if it's not very good but i guess I'm trying to do what i can let me know if you got like any tips or anything but yeah thank you I just think that is one of the most beautiful things to watch. All that golden green spilling into the tank. The combine has been moving since about 9 or 9.30 this morning. Wow, that is a bad guess row. Holy cow. Guess row is where the two rows that match up. So if you go down with your planter to the north and back to the south, the two rows right next to each other aren't always the same distance apart. And that one happens to be really bad. Anyways, combine's been rolling since about 9, 9.30, and we have gone through a quarter tank of fuel. What time is it? It's 2.15, and the combine's saying we are going to need fuel. The machine is saying we're going to be empty in 15.4 hours. I think the day is going to end before that, though. Usually, I try to keep the combine running just under an engine load in the yellow. You know, so like there's green engine load and then yellow and then red at the very top where you can kill the combine if you're pushing it too hard. I like to keep it just under the yellow, but there's some spots in the field where the corn is down so bad, I just can't go that fast. So I have to really slow down, even though the combine in theory could handle a lot more, I save a lot more grain by going slower in some spots. Something that I do want to mention is I know that some of you have been around since like the very beginning, probably a lot of you actually. And I just wanted you to know that whether you've been here from day one or yesterday, I just really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, there are a lot of things in my life that would not be possible without you guys. I get to experience a lot of super awesome things and share them with you guys because of you guys. So just know that your presence here and your participation in my documentation of my farming journey really just means the world to me. Can you see which row is the guess row? I mean, it's all kind of falling over, so that doesn't help, but it's right there. That row is way wider than the other ones. And so it means these three outside rows lean over when they come into the corn head. One of the questions I think I get maybe more than anything is what do we do when we need to go to the bathroom? Which I guess that question seems pretty self-explanatory to me because people will ask, you know, do you drive home? Do you guys all take turns? Do you guys bring a porta potty out to the field? No. I don't know if you guys have seen the landscape out here, but there is not much. I mean, there's some roads, but it's mostly just other farmers that are driving by. So if you need to go to the bathroom, you just go outside. And I don't know if that is just something that most people don't ever get to experience in their lives, but that's just what you have to do. I don't know, no one is driving home to do that, I can promise you. To all the people that ask that question, it makes me think, have you guys never gone camping? People seem to make it out to be a really big deal and it's just, really not. Uh, this is the job I chose 
these are the working conditions and we all pretty happily live with it. It's, it's really not that big of a deal. When I go and press this button to push my auger out, I'm a little over three quarters of the way full. I want to be super careful about the angle of the ground and where I am in relation to the grain cart because in the wrong conditions, that auger could smack the back of the cart, hit the front of the tractor. It could end badly. So I'm just always very cautious of where the auger is in relation to that. Chugging right away on this field. From this point of view, it looks like corn and sky is all there is. I know it's hard to tell on camera, but this is, oh man, it doesn't even look like anything on camera. This is a steep incline. I am constantly impressed with the capabilities of this machine. It's so big and weighs so much and there's so much corn in this and yet we're still just crawling up the hill like a beast. It's so cool. It is now 5.34 and we are at a half tank of fuel left. We got a snack, oh, snack delivery coming on. <laughs> so it took... <laughs> oh yeah, 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 hop on in, hop on in. What are we, here, hold on, what are we eating here? What is this? Uh, Give me one of these. Uh, oh wait, snack what? Meal. Rope? I looked over and I thought he was eating celery. What do you think, Grant? Um, I'm not a big apple guy. Um, I don't know. I'm skeptical, but it's good. It's good candy. I haven't had candy in a while. Um, we got our radios charged up. We are back in business. So we can finally communicate with each other. And let me just tell you, it makes life so much easier. Right now, the sun is blinding. So it is very difficult for Gage to know what is going on because he's staring into the sun. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So the radios help a lot. Plus, snack deliveries. Laura, that's a big one. Oh my goodness. Oh, I know you're not supposed to do that, but that is... What's the full sign? <laughs> It made me do it even though we have radius now. You're full gauge. I'd be careful. That's a hot one. Now, the real question is, do we cut a new land or do we racetrack it? So when she says cut a new land, it's like going down the middle where she can't unload, but we still have some in the back. I don't know. I don't know if I could make it all the way down. Uh, let's play it safe and racetrack it. Do we racetrack it? Yeah. Good. Racetracking is more fun anyways. So there's only like, let's say six rounds left. And so I'm just going to circle everything that's left. I'm, all, I'm always keeping my auger on the outside. So when Gage goes and dumps in a truck, he'll come back and pick me up right where we left off. Earlier today, I almost got stuck here. This is the spot. Those are some deep tracks, Grant. You gonna come back and fix these? I'll come back and fix them. All right, just check it. Looks kind of squishy. I love the sound that it makes. It's kind of comforting. Uh, I loaded it pretty hot there. Yeah, it runs pretty hot. Did it uh, all fit on the truck, or is there some kind of on the, on the side there? Some of it on the ground because it wasn't all filled up the truck. That's why I said it was coming out of his check. I think it should come out of Laura's check. It should probably. I'm not getting paid to say it. It's not even that much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little spot for the deer and raccoons to have a little feast tonight. My goodness, what in the world are we doing out here? Yeah. It's a pretty poor looking dry land. Okay, so a lot of people seem to come out have a lot of suggestions for our dry land because clearly our dry land produced nothing this year. But I want you guys to know that this was not a normal year at all. Usually our dry land 
produces a decent crop. So that's why it's so disheartening. Are you just gonna come to this side, Laura? Yeah, I'm just gonna raise track. That's why it's so disheartening because usually the dry land produces a good crop. There's a lot of farmers that don't have access to irrigation at all, and so all their crops are dry land. So we still plant stuff on the quarters and the end rows every single year because usually they do produce. This was just a really, really hard year for growing stuff. And we don't plant the same amount in the dry land. Like it's a reduced population and we don't put as much fertilizer out there. So we're not like, we're only putting in there what the ground could produce. So it's not like we're just out here wasting seed and fertilizer. Yeah. We have different expectations for the dry land and end rows portions of the field, but we are hoping to get a crop off of them. There is two rounds on this field left. I'm going to head home to make supper so I can have it ready for when we switch fields later tonight. Grant? Yeah? Can you and Gage handle things for two rounds while I'm gone? I think we can give it together. We you think so? Okay. Time. Sounds well, good. If you finish this field, I will meet you at the next one. Alright. I made it to the last pass for the night. One last load before we go home. We did make it to the end of the field, but we did break something. So, Laura, I'm sorry. You should have stayed here. Nothing would have been broken. Uh, I'm gonna go show you what broke. We're underneath the corn head, and this chopper gear box went out. That's not supposed to be able to spin all the way around. This one's working, and see, it only spins that much. This one is completely shelled. So we're gonna have to fix that. Out here in the field, you can see it's leaving like a little windrow. So it still harvests just fine. It's underneath, it doesn't fully process this row of stalks. See like here is, it's all cut off. You can see this corn stalk perfectly cut off. And these are all left long and leaves a little windrow. Not ideal to plant it. But it, it worked well enough to finish the field. That's the last truck leaving. Gage is gonna follow me to the next field. This has been a tough field. Broken corn, muddy conditions, bad gearbox. It's been a tough field, but that is a pretty sunset. So we just got done with this field. This is field number two of corn. And it's currently about 7.40. And me and Grant are gonna head to a different field. So I'm glad we got the field done to be honest. I mean, we're gonna go, I think we're going to the county line, which that's the one that we completely dissed this year. Where I got the tractor stuck, actually, it's that far. So, yeah. I'm driving down the road now, and I actually really like transporting equipment at night because it's after the co-op's closed, so there's hardly any semis out here. I haven't passed one yet. We go down the road with uh, the headers on, and so if I were to meet another combine or a tractor, I could probably get around a semi truck if there's a good driveway. But man, if I met another combine, I would, it would be a standoff for sure. So this actually works out pretty good. What are we doing, Grant? We moved to the next field, and this, so this is the new farm that we got this year. It's the one we disc. It's the one we did all the pivot work to, and. We got nothing. Dry land. The dry land is so sad. It's barely going between the snoots. Yeah. Not looking good. No. But it's dry land. There's not much you can do about it. Nope. Laura came back to pick us up from the field. And look at this masterpiece. Food has been delivered. What do you call that? I don't know, stir fry, rice, dumplings. Does it taste pretty good, Gage? It's pretty good. Awesome. All right, go back to the other field, get vehicles, call it a day.